Stats New Zealand released the latest child poverty statistics for the year ended June 2023. So that's June the 30th last year. I think it's the last day of June. It's not, yes, June the 30th last year. So they're not current. And um, though actually oh, eight months ago. Um, and those, there are nine child poverty measures that they released yesterday. They um, provide estimates um, according to the Department of Statistics uh, press release, which I'm looking at at the moment, of low income and material hardship rates um, for measures that were listed in the Child Poverty Reduction Act of 2018, a piece of legislation that was brought in by well, it must have been uh, the Labor New Zealand First Government in 2018. And um, in 2020, yes, that's right, when the new Labor Government uh, was elected, um, they said, listen, child poverty was going to be a key feature. We were seeking to bring those statistics down. But for most of us, and I'm talking about most average, ordinary New Zealand Kiwis, um, we've never quite worked out what child poverty is. And for those of us who travel to third world countries and come back to New Zealand, we've gone, hmm. Um, and some of us have then also raised our eyebrows when the concept of child poverty is measured in a New Zealand context. Well, uh, joining us to talk about how we measure child poverty and what yesterday's statistics release actually means and what are the sort of things that might constitute child poverty in, the, in New Zealand. Um, we're very fortunate to be joined by Dr Ryan Sutcliffe um, from the Department of Statistics. Uh, and Dr Sutcliffe, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on this afternoon. Hi, Michael. Thanks for the invitation. Um, I take it that I've got that right, haven't I? The Child Poverty Act put you guys in charge of doing this responsible thing. But I imagine that was generically... You, though, measure stuff. What do you measure stuff to determine if someone's in child poverty? Yeah, so that's a good question. So the Child Poverty Reduction Act specifies uh, 10 measures, as you uh, alluded to earlier. So um, what this means is that we're taking a, a multi-measure, multi-level approach. And the reason we do that is because poverty uh, is, is actually quite a complex uh, topic to cover. And so by having these these 10 measures in the Act, we can actually uh, get a pic better picture of, of what's happening in the country. Uh, now, Stats NZ, uh, we report on child poverty uh, each year since the year ended June 2018. And so, so the year ended June 2023, as you also mentioned before, that's the, the fifth year that we've been reporting on it. Um, you've done a great job of describing it so far, actually. So we do have low-income measures, uh, and we also have measures of material hardship. Now, they are, there are a range of uh, low-income measures and there are a couple of uh, measures of material hardship. I think it, the, the best way to, to maybe unpack that would be to say, for our low-income measures, um, if you're living in a household that is in uh, a particular income threshold uh, relative to other households in the country, you're, you're determined to be in poverty. Um, for material hardship, this is a, it's a little bit more tangible um, now, what we do is we ask households uh, in the household economic survey from which the statistics are produced a range of 17 questions um, about essential consumption items that, that they may or may not be able to afford uh, due to the cost. And so if, if they go without six of these 17 items, now these are things like uh, being unable to afford fresh fruit and veggies, um, putting off doctor's visits, um, being un unable to afford keeping warm in the winter, um, things things like this, if they go without six of these, they're considered to be uh, in material hardship. Uh, and I'll note that material hardship is, is one of the measures that we did see an increase from 22 to 2023. To meet one, what's the household income? Um, v of V, um, presumably the average household income in New Zealand. And then to that material hardship question, the 17 um, tests you've got, and if you say tick six or more of them. Can I go to the income first of all? Um, does the income ver uh, differ around New Zealand depending on where you are, or is, have, have you struck a sort of a median level upon which you've fastened that a child living in those circumstances must be living in poverty? Yeah, so you've got to bang on the head with, with the latter. So what we do is we calculate what's called um, the median household equivalised disposable income. 
uh, that's uh, quite a technical term, but what the equivalised part uh, refers to is is a calculation that we do to adjust uh, households' incomes um, so that we can actually compare their standard of living when they might have a different household size or composition. Yeah. Uh, we do we do have details on our website um, that you can that you can find to exactly how we go about that process because it can be a little bit complicated to understand. Um, but as you as you alluded to, the uh, the median is what we get. So. What we do so is what's we, the median we, disposable income in you? So, so what you say, that, that would differ depending on if it was just you had one child and two parents who were working or I suppose it wouldn't matter who was working. It's about the income that's brought into that household. It might matter if you had two children, three children, four children. It would be different for all those sorts of scenarios? That's, that's exactly right. And so accompanying the child poverty statistics, we, do, uh, we did release a range of uh, household income and housing cost statistics as well. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention earlier, uh, within, within those child poverty uh, measures, we do also, for some of them, consider housing costs. But what, what we do is we, we equivalise incomes. Uh, again, we adjust household incomes depending on their household size and composition because they yeah. do have different incomes and uh, those incomes uh, contribute to uh, bigger or smaller households and, and different types of costs. But so what it's we not do po- is we so what's the me- so so the median then I've got, I think I've got that the median will change depending upon the household so you wouldn't have a universal median but you would strike I presume some form of percentage of that median in which you say that person's living in hardship yeah that's correct so what we do is we we order our households all households in New Zealand from from lowest to, to highest income we then find that median income so that middle yeah. household in New Zealand and we find their income for one of the measures. So let's take measure A um, in the Child Poverty Reduction Act. We take that median income. We look at what 50% of that median income is. 50%. And then if you're 50%, so that's for measure A. Um, And that's a before housing costs measure. So we've ordered those households based on their equivalised disposable incomes before deducting housing costs. And then children living in those households with less than 50% of that median uh, are considered to be in poverty. Right. Okay, got that. Then there's the material hardship analysis that you do. Um, does that just show that I'm living in poverty with material hardship? Is that is that how you come to that conclusion? Because I'm now going to see whether you tick six of those boxes. Well, it's one of the of the ten measures of poverty, um, that material hardship measure. Um, so oh. you would be considered to be in poverty if you ticked six of those 17 items on that particular measure. Now, we also have another measure of, of poverty based on material hardship, and that's what we call severe material hardship, if you tick nine of those boxes. And then finally, we have a, a measure of households that are both in material hardship and low-income poverty after deducting housing costs. So we do have one particular measure that considers both income and hardship, uh, uh, but the remaining measures are either just low income, and that's at different thresholds, and uh, material hardship at different thresholds. Um, from a stats point of view, and uh, the, the legislation you would have to enact, is it is it prescriptive, the legislation? I'm sorry, I don't have the act in front of me. Is it prescriptive as to what you've got to measure, or were you given a, an element of discretion in the way in which you went about it? Uh, it is it is prescriptive, um, and one of the important things with monitoring child poverty, um, especially over time, is that if you do make changes partway through monitoring, then it means that it's a bit harder to compare to the yeah, previous yeah. years. So yeah. to take the example of material hardship, if we change the questions that we ask people, uh, we wouldn't be able to uh, compare with, with the earlier poverty rates based on that measure. So uh, it is it is prescriptive, and, and we do consistently uh, report on those same measures. Okay, now the 17 questions, or the I think you call it DEP 17 index, is that is that right? That's right. Yeah. The DEP 17 questions, can you just give us some indication of what those questions are, are Ryan? I sure can. So the DEP 17 refers to what is shorthand for the deprivation 17, and so this refers to, to 17 uh, items <laughs> that most people would consider uh, essential. And so these right. include 
uh, things like, um, as I said before, putting off doctor's visits because it's too expensive. Um, but some other examples include having to buy cheaper or less cuts of meat because of the cost or being unable to afford um, an unexpected $500 bill that turned up, um, being unable to pay their utilities on time uh, and other things like that. What I will say is that in particular what we've, we've seen in terms of that material hardship increase over the year is um, more households struggling to, to afford fresh fruit and vegetables and um, buying cheaper or less cuts of meat in particular, um, and that, that strongly reflects the, the cost of living increases we've seen over the past.